Now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Fibber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. And we're going back 69 years to July 1st, 1953, Cold War drama, Dana Andrews, in I Was a Communist for the FBI, 15 Minutes to Murder. Thank you for tuning in on this first day of July, brand new month, 182nd day of the year, 183 days remaining until we get to 2023. Battle of Gettysburg began on this date in 1863. Department of Justice formally came into existence on this date in 1870. The world's first international telephone call took place in 1881. Not a long, long distance, but long enough between St. Stephen's, New Brunswick, Canada, and Calais in Maine. The Battle of San Juan Hill fought on this date in 1898. The Communist Party of China founded in 1941. Boeing Air Transport began service on this date in 1931. They would then become known as United. Tokyo City merged with Tokyo Prefecture on this date in 1943 and was dissolved. Since then, no city in Japan has had the name Tokyo. Uh, Fiorello LaGuardia read the funnies on the radio on this date in 1945. Now, children, I know you're all disappointed today that you didn't get the funnies. So gather around. Ah, here's Dick Tracy. Let's see what Dick Tracy is doing. Now, get this picture. Here is wet wash. The doors of the laundry wagon are open. He's leaning with his back toward the wagon. And he's counting his money. Two, three, four thousand. Now, LaGuardia was set to his reg- do his regular Sunday broadcast of Talk to the People, a weekly radio show on WNYC Radio owned by the city. At one point in the show, he encouraged his listeners to gather their children around the radio and commenced to read that day's Dick Tracy comic from the Sunday Daily News. Now, with obvious relish, the mayor described the action in the panels, impersonated the voices of characters, and reminded listeners of the plot that had led up to that. That moment at the end of each strip he would explain uh, the moral of that weekly adventure to his young listeners it zip codes introduced for u.s mail on this date in 1963 in 1950 u.s involvement in u.n involvement in the korean war formally began In 1967, the European community, formally created out of a merger with the common market, the European Coal and Steel Community, and the European Atomic Energy Commission. Prince Charles of Wales crowned on this date in 1969. I, Charles, Prince of Wales, do become your liege man of life and limb, and of earthly worship, and faith and truth I will bear unto thee, to live and die against all manner of folks. Charles, the heir apparent to the crown of Britain. Sony introduced the Walkman on this date in 1979. The PG-13 rating introduced by the Motion Picture Association of America in 1984. In 1987, WFAN in New York City launched as the world's first all-sports radio station. The People's Republic of China resumed sovereignty over the city-state of Hong Kong on this date in 1997, ending 156 years of British colonial rule, and it's never been the same since. Uh, Vermont's civil unions law went into effect in 2000. The International Criminal Court established in 2002 to prosecute individuals for genocide, crimes against humanity, war crimes, and the crime of aggression. In 2004, Saddam Hussein made his first appearance in court at his arraignment charged with a variety of crimes, including the invasion of Kuwait and the gassing of the Kurds on this date in 2004, and he pled innocent. Saddam Hussein was asked his name at the very beginning and said, my name is Saddam Hussein and I am the president of Iraq. And that was the position he took throughout, that he was the president of Iraq and he needed to be treated under certain circumstances. 
he could not be treated as a common criminal, and he did not accept the jurisdiction of his court. At one point, about two-thirds of the way through, he said, let's cut through all this. We know what this is. This is theater organized by President Bush, George Bush, the Bush administration, in order to improve their political fortunes. And it was in 2020 that the U.S. Canada, U.S. Mexico Canada agreement replaced the North American Free Trade Agreement. Passing away on this date in history, author Harriet Beecher Stowe, also Michael Landon, Wolfman Jack, Margot Hemingway, Rob, uh, Robert Mitchum, popular singer Guy Mitchell, also Candy Magnet Forrest Mars Sr., actor Walter Matthau, Marlon Brando, Luther Vandross, the fine singer, and actor Carl Malden. This is the birth date of Charles Lawton, Estee Lauder, sportscaster Bill Stern, actress Olivia de Havilland, who passed away in 2020, 104 years old she was. Farley Granger, pass, uh, born on this date, also singer Bobby Day, uh, Sidney Pollock, the film director, actress Shirley Hemphill, and Diana, Princess of Wales. Happy birthday number 91 to fine French actress Leslie Carome. Clinger on MASH, Jamie Farr is 88. Blondie, Debbie Harry's, uh, is uh, 77 years old today. Uh, the, the musical group Blondie, not the cartoon. The B-52 spread Schneider is 71. Dan Aykroyd, 70 years old. He played Cameron Fry, Ferris Bueller's hypochondriac best friend in John Hughes' Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Alan Ruck, 66 years old. Evelyn Champagne King, 62 years old today. Her big song, Shame, back in the disco era. Uh, Pamela Anderson turns 55 today, though I understand some parts are significantly cheaper. Rapper singer Missy Elliott is 51. From Lord of the Rings and 911 Lone Star, Liv Tyler is 45. And from Titus, Evan Ellingston is 34. Those some of the people who celebrate the first day of July as their birthday. And if this happens to be your birthday... Hi, we're the four freshmen, and we just want to say... Happy birthday to you. And from 69 years ago, July 1st, 1953, Dana Andrews, I was a communist with the FBI, on this Friday Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite station. You ever make a change and then think, why didn't I do this years ago? Well, that's how people feel about switching to MediShare for their health care, especially now with inflation the way it is. People are very happy with the savings. Most families save about $500 a month when they switch. It's a huge help when prices are going up so fast in so many other areas. And MediShare's customer satisfaction rate is double that of health insurance. It's just a different experience, and people really like that. MediShare is an alternative to health insurance. It's a community of Christians who share each other's health care bills, and it's been going strong for over 25 years. It really is the gold standard, the most trusted name in healthcare sharing. Find out why people love it. Find out why they rave about the customer service and find out how good it feels to save some money right now. They're super easy to talk to. Here's the number, 833-34-BIBLE. That's 833-34-BIBLE, 833-34-BIBLE. Now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, Dana Andrews. I was a communist for the FBI 69 years ago, July 1st, 1953. I was a communist for the FBI. Starring Dana Andrews and an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. From the actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Savetic, how many of the incidents in this unusual story? Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Savetic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. For nine phantasmal years, I was the man who looked into the dark mirror and wondered, which is the reflection and which is me? For nine years, I lived my double life so intensely that sometimes I wondered... Which is the real Sovetic? What is reality and what is the dream? 
It's over now. It all fades back into memory and merciful unreality. It's hard to believe it happened. So fantastic, so stunning were the events and their implications. Sometimes I wonder, is it really over, or is this a lull in the nightmare? Now, here is Dana Andrews as Matt Savetic, Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked 15 Minutes to Murder. I've been out of sorts for weeks, and I know what it is. The steady, grinding burden of intrigue and vigilance and double dealing, and just plain, raw, unvarnished fear are getting me down. I go to a doctor, and he tells me exactly what I want to hear. At last, I have a good, legitimate reason to be excused temporarily from party duty. I make my routine telephone check-in with my chief, Comrade Revchenko, from a pay telephone full of the glad news from my doctor. Nothing right now except continue with your routine duties until further notified. About those routine duties... And be a little more prompt in reporting. Well, I can explain that delay. I've been to my doctor. Why? Well, nothing serious. Routine checkup. He did say I ought to take a rest. I see. You wouldn't want me to go haywire in the middle of an assignment, would you? Did he find anything wrong with you? Well, nothing serious, really. Oh. I could go back and have him pin a stiff cardiac wrap on me. That'll make you any happier. What did the doctor discover? A little high blood pressure, but that's only... Good enough. What? Report to headquarters at once. Look, I'm supposed to take it easy just Report to headquarters. The doctor said... At once. At once. Sit down, Comrade Savitic. Before we go much further, I'd like to point out... Point out nothing until I've finished, Comrade. I'm sorry. I'd been doing some work while you were on your way over here. Concerning me? I have rearranged matters to provide for you, yes. Provide for me? You need a rest, Comrade. I could use one. I have arranged everything. Oh, how do you mean? Arranged what? A private room at Angel of Mercy Hospital... Well, look, I'm not really sick. You need a rest in bed. Well... I had assigned somebody else to this, but your mild hypertensive condition makes you more logical for the job. Oh, it's work then. A rest in bed at party expense. We expect some return for our generosity, and complete idleness would soon bore you. Good enough. What's the job? Directly across the street from the room I've reserved for you, some 200 feet away, is the back of a row of fashionable apartment houses. Oh, yeah, I know the place. From your bed, you will keep a constant lookout on one of those apartments. Which apartment is marked on this simple diagram? Mm, uh, Twelfth floor. All five windows. Mm Mm-hmm. And you will need this pocket telescope, small enough to keep on your person. Allow nobody to realize that you're watching the apartment. What's the object? Oh, shouldn't I ask? You should very definitely know, comrade. We are out of patience with the FBI. Oh? Tired of their spying, tired of their undercover burrowing into the very core of our party apparatus. It is time we serve notice that this is war and that espionage in war is punishable by extreme measures. Well, then the man I'm watching is an FBI spy? Study every move he makes. He knows he's a marked man. He does not expose himself where we can punish him. Well, that's understandable. Now repeat this number after me. Shoot. Elmwood, 41137. Elmwood 41137. Again. Elmwood 41137. Mark nothing down. Of course not. Watch the apartment. Notice Benedict's actions. Well, that's his name then, huh? Benedict? Call it that. Go ahead. Report to Elmwood 41137 closely. It may take a week or two weeks or a month, but keep at it. What may take that long, exactly? For Benedict to decide it's safe to leave his stronghold. When he does, give our men half an hour's notice. They will do the rest. Check. Informers and contemptible stool pigeons. Time they squirmed. What else? That's it. Everything's prepared for you. All right. I'll pick up a few things and report at the hospital. Savetic. Yes? We will leave for the hospital directly from here. I'll come back here, then. We are leaving from here immediately. But I... Secrecy, comrade Savetic. Secrecy. Absolute and impenetrable Secrecy. We will go to the hospital from here in a car I have waiting for us. They are all over the FBI spies and informers. 
You seem disturbed, comrade. Uh, it's just this. I'm to be the accessory to a man's murder. An FBI informer? Some vacation. You did not join the party to sip pink lemonade, comrade. In the hospital, you will under no circumstances attempt to contact the party. Do you understand? I understand. It is out of our hands. Whatever occurs must be credited to the ordinary underworld retaliation. Yes. Forget us. Simply call Elmwood 41337. 1137, isn't it? <laughs> Just testing. We will go now. We walk several blocks and hesitate at a corner to be picked up by a nondescript car driven by a man I've never seen before. Silence. All the way to the Angel of Mercy Hospital. Absolute silence. I'm being whisked away to a private hospital room secretly, incommunicado, to spy on another FBI undercover man like myself and send him to his death. And I can't even get to a telephone to call my FBI contact and report what's happening. I've got to report to them. I've got to get to the FBI. All I get is to the hospital, though. Revchenko stands by wordlessly while the registrar checks me into my room, 1216. Then he goes, and I'm on my own, isolated, marooned. Can I get you anything, Mr. Svetik? No, oh, thank you, nurse. Dr. Anatole will be in to see you soon. Who? Oh? Well, your doctor, Dr. Anatole. Fine. He'll be in directly. Okay, he'll be in in a flash. Oh, you're not going to be a bad patient, are you now? Oh, I'm just going to be the sweetest thing ever happened to this little old temple of mercy. You don't have to be cross, do you? I want to be left alone. Just as you say, Mr. Spedick. Absolute minimum of solicitous attention. What are you angry at me for? I'm not angry at you. Oh, I'm sorry, Ness. I'm not angry at you. I know you're you're nervous and upset, but... Oh, nurse. We'll take care of that, though, won't we? Well, just remember, I'm not mad at you. Oh, is the telephone connected? Oh, yes. Go right ahead and use it. Dr. Anato will be right in. The second I'm alone, I take the pocket scope from under my pillow and peer out the window. Across 200 feet of street and a backyard terrace to the rear of those stylish apartment buildings. I pick out Benedict's suite. That's it, all right. A sportsman's apartment. Rifles on racks. Hunting trophies on every wall. Cups and other trophies on a mantelpiece. I reach for the telephone. Communique number one. I feel sick. Your order, please. Elmwood 41137. Thank you. Never mind the opera. Yeah? Elmwood 41137? Yeah. I'm in. Oh, yeah. You know who's talking, don't you? Keep talking. You may have to move fast. Move fast is what we do best. Stay close to the phone now. I got a permanent poker game right in the room. That's all for now. Check. Now. Your order, please. Evergreen 65542. Thank you. The FBI. Somehow. Somehow I've got to let them know where I am at least and what I'm up to and what one of their boys is in for. Driscoll, that's my contact's code name. I'm O'Neill. Driscoll. O'Neill. Driscoll. O'Neill. Driscoll. Come on, answer. Get with it, boys. Get on the boat. Hello? Oh, uh, Driscoll? Driscoll, please, right away. I beg your pardon? Driscoll. Driscoll, right away. Hurry. Yes, there is, I tell you. Who is this? O'Neill. Tell him I'm O'Neill, he'll know. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is Driscoll. Who? Go ahead. How's your mother? Fine. How's yours? I know that voice on the wire isn't Driscoll. Then who is it? I have to reach the FBI. I don't know what I've got on the line, but I've got to take a chance. Calculated risk. I've got to stay on the phone. If I am talking to the FBI, I've got to talk a gibberish that makes some kind of sense to them and sounds harmless enough to anybody who might be tapping my wire. Maybe this guy who says he's Driscoll is the wiretap. I don't know. I've got to play it cozy. 
But I've got to play. Hello? Hello, are you there, O'Neill? You know, uh, I was just thinking, Grisco. Yeah? Those mysterious telephone calls your wife's been getting, some crank or something. Yeah? The next time this bum calls, why doesn't she play up to him and have her sister run next door and have the cops trace the call? We had exactly the same idea. That's what we're going to do. Well, have her keep him on the line long enough, though. I know. Well, that way the cops can trace the call and close in on Mr. Mysterious. That sounds very conspiratorial. What? Oh. Hello? Oh, somebody just walked in. I am Dr. Anatole. Who? I think you'd best ring off for now. Well, I feel all right. Better hang up. Sure. So long, chum. I've got to ring off. Yeah. You should not have a telephone until a staff physician examines you and decides you may have one. I'm all right, doctor. Then why are you here? Well, just a little hypertension, that's all. You should not have a telephone until I have okayed it. I'm surprised. Now, if you'll cooperate, I shall examine you. Oh, this whole thing is weird, and it's going to get more weird. 69 years ago, July 1st, 1953, I was a communist with the FBI. Thanks for tuning in to Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite station. No offense, but are you a little fat when you look in the mirror? How would you like to learn the secrets to lose three to five pounds a week easily without joining the gym or going through any crazy diets? It's called Body Sculpt by Med Diet. For the last two decades, we've been helping people just like you that have pounds they want to shed. We've helped millions of people lose thousands and thousands of pounds over the years. And now it's your turn. Learn the secrets of how to lose weight with one simple phone call. You'll see an amazing difference in a matter of days. Don't believe us. We'll offer you a money-back guarantee. If you're ready to start losing weight right now, Call right now to learn more about your risk free order to Body Sculpt. Call for your risk free offer. 800 738 5332. 800 738 5332. 800 738 5332. That's 800 738 5332. Are you in bad pain? You know what I mean. Your knees hurt. Your shoulder hurts. Your elbow and back are constantly killing you. And I'm sure you've tried every pain pill or cream available at the drugstore. Am I right? Well, here's something you haven't tried. Pain Magic. Pain Magic is not available at any drugstore. The only place you can get it is by calling the special toll-free number I'm about to give you. And to make things even better, call right now and find out about our buy one, get one free offer. We're so confident it'll work for you that we offer a free bottle with your purchase. No prescription required. Call now to learn how you can get pain magic and get rid of your pain. Remember, your results may vary. 800-492-8164. 800-492-8164. That's 800-492-8164. Thank you for tuning in to Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite station. And we're listening to an episode of I Was a Communist for the FBI starring Dana Andrews as it was broadcast on Wednesday, July 1st, 1953. In the newspapers of that Wednesday 69 years ago, these were some of the headlines. Two senators said yesterday they fear the U.S. might be forced into fighting South Korea if the communists should decide to accept truce pledges made by General Mark Clark. Chairman H. Anderson Smith of the Senate Foreign Relations and Far East Subcommittee said in an interview that many fear the communists might put us in a tremendous hole if they decide to sign the truce paper and lay it on the table before us. Senator Sparkman, the Democrat of Alabama, another subcommittee member, adding if this action is correctly reported in press accounts, General Clark went too far. If the communists accept the proposal on the basis he's laid down, we might be put in the embarrassing position of having to fight the South Koreans on behalf of the communists. 
Now, the U.N. commander today called his top field commanders in Korea into secret session in Tokyo, presumably to discuss the drawn-out Korean armistice crisis. President Eisenhower's truce envoy delayed his sixth meeting with South Korea, President uh, Sigmund Rhee, whose bitter opposition has snagged the signing of ceasefire terms. Congressman Wheeler, the Democrat of Georgia, failed to convince a House subcommittee yesterday that Supreme Court Justice William O. Douglas ought to be impeached. Three of the five members of the Judiciary Subcommittee said Wheeler had failed to make a case. One of them told him he had presented the charges in a loose way. Another said Wheeler offered pure hearsay rather than fact. Wheeler apparently accepted the idea that he wouldn't get anywhere with impeachment. The Georgian filed an impeachment resolution accusing Douglas of high crimes and misdemeanors after the justice temporarily stopped the execution of Adam spies Julius and Ethel Rosenberg. The foreign ministers of the U.S., Britain, and France meeting in Washington July 10th to explore great global questions, including waves of unrest in Russia's European satellite. Formal announcement of the session made late yesterday afternoon by the State Department. Attending will be Secretary of State John Foster Dulles, Lord Salisbury, Acting Foreign Secretary of Britain, and Georges Bideau, the Foreign Minister of France. Lincoln White, State Department press officer, said the meeting will be held in view of the postponement of the Bermuda talks, which were to brought together President Eisenhower, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, and French Premier Joseph Lan- uh, uh, Daniel. The uh, No, Do- Joseph Laniel. The talks were postponed when Churchill got doctor's orders to take a rest. <laughs> President Eisenhower asked Congress for blanket authority yesterday to dip into the U.S. government's vast stock of farm products and give, lend, or sell the food to foreign nations urgently needing relief. Besides its purely relief aspects, if passed, the legislation could have an important effect on the domestic farm problem. Many farm legislators and others have been seeking means to get rid of the huge supplies of farm products the government has on its hands. As a result of price support operations, big surpluses tend to drive down farm prices. In the Cold War with Russia, there have been suggestions that shipping more food to key areas would, aside from the humanitarian aspects, tend to win friends for the U.S., and thwart the Kremlin. An 80-year-old woman driver spending five days in jail rather than pay a $10 traffic fine to the crooked state of Illinois. Justice of the Peace Judge Hansen said he ordered Miss Anna Pittman of Sterling uh, in jail yesterday after she told him she would pay, and quoting, no damn fine because the state and its justices of the peace are crooked. Miss Pittman, owner of a farm near Walnut in Bureau County, was fined $10 and $4 costs for driving her auto without a driver's license. State policeman Herbert Steelman told Hanson the woman also ran a stop sign, drove down the middle of a highway, and verbally abused the officer when he, ha- uh, when he halted her. Miss Pittman serving out her fine in the Whiteside County Jail at Morrison. And a cement mixer in Bristol, England undressed 21-year-old David Collins down to his shoes and socks. Gear wheels on the mixer first seized his shirt and whipped it off, together with his vest and undershirt. Before Collins could break three, his pants and undershorts went the same way. Workman whipped a raincoat around the bruised and blushing Collins, who said it was a cheap suit. Flimsy material, thank heaven. Those some of the day's top news stories is reported in the newspapers of Wednesday, July 1st, 1953 on your radio. I was a communist for the FBI, which continues next on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Are you suffering with arthritis or osteoporosis? Do you have diabetes? Did you know that these are just two of the hundreds of diseases that have seen improvement with Dr. Wallach's incredible longevity products? You can't get them at a health food store. The only way to get them is to call us at 800-214-0065. That's 800-214-0065. Do you have heart disease, fibromyalgia, or high blood pressure? Do you have a terrible time losing weight? Dr. Wallach can help. He was a veterinarian and cured diseases in animals. He felt that he could do the same for humans, so he became a physician. Over 50 years of research and helping people like you goes into every bottle of Dr. Wallach's amazing discoveries. Do you want to feel better? Learn how to treat the cause of your problem rather than covering up the symptoms with drugs. 
Call 800-214-0065. That's 800-214-0065. On Saturday's Classic Radio Theater, another episode of I Was a Communist with the FBI. This was from a year earlier, uh, July 2nd, 1952, where the Red Men Roam. The Battle of the Bowl doesn't go as the party would like it, thanks to Sabetic's brother and his new girl, Tanya. That'll be coming up on Saturday's Classic Radio Theater, but now the conclusion of I Was a Communist with the FBI from uh, a year later, July 1st, 1953, 15 Minutes to Murder. Back to Dana Andrews, starring as Matt Sabetic in I Was a Communist for the FBI and the second act of our story. How much did Dr. Anatole hear? What does he know beside medicine? I'm afraid of that mucilaginous voice and that cold, nothing smile of his. Is he there to watch me? That phone made him pretty mad in his cold-blooded way. Or maybe I'm imagining it. I don't know. In my position, I've got to assume that the walls have ears, and that a strange voice that isn't Driscoll's could be a trap. Meanwhile, I've got to study Benedict across the way, find out when he gets up, when he has his meals brought in, how much time he spends on his two telephones. He never goes out. But when he gets up his nerve to try it, he's dead. And I will have killed him indirectly. And it looks close now. Your order, please. Elmwood 41137. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah? Any time now. Oh, it's you. I hate to disturb your poker game. What's the matter? It's you. Never mind. Wise guy. Stand by to go on fast notice. Yeah, I'm all tensed up. I mean it. Listen, what are we kids? We know what to do. All right, then. Are you stupid or something? He's taking stuff off the walls and packing them. That means he's ready to go. When he goes, we'll come. All right, stand by. Check. That's all. I keep watching Benedict. All the signs point to his making a break for it. I think of taking a chance on the pretty nurse, who looks too crisp and fresh to be a comrade. But how does one know? Send her with a sealed note to the FBI address? Or no? Write a note and send it through the mails. Maybe special delivery. That's it. Take a chance, that's all. Take a chance that whoever I give the letter to, to mail, is on the level. Everybody can't be a spy. But it only takes one. I'll do it. Oh, nurse. Oh, nurse. Yes, Mr. Steady. I might have a letter for you to mail. When do you go off duty? At four o'clock, Mr. Steady. All right, I'll have it ready for you at, uh... No. What? Never mind. Forget it. Never mind. Well, uh... all right, Mr. Steady. Just as you say. <laughs> Too late. I waited too long, hesitating, being scared. Because I can see that Benedict across the street is getting ready to clear out. By the time the nurse got to the FBI headquarters, it'll be all over anyhow. I've got to report to Rev Chinko's goon squad. I don't want to, but I've got to. And then, maybe figure some way out for Benedict. And for myself, too. Elmwood 411... Hello? Your order, please. Elmwood. Hello. Elmwood 41137. Thank you. No. I can't do it. I won't. Good afternoon, Mr. Savetti. Anatole. Or Dr. Anatole. I I didn't hear you. Perhaps you were preoccupied. 
Miss Christopher says you seemed quite upset a moment ago. Who? who? Your nurse. Upset? Something about changing your mind about some letter. <laughs> oh, that. That small affair of the heart, you know. That's probably for me, so that surgery. Yes. For you. Thank you. Yes? I had your party for you when you hung up, Mr. Seddy. Well, I, I don't think I... Go I... right ahead, Savetti. Don't mind me. Oh, operator, I don't... Yeah. Want... Hello? Oh, you again. Hold on just a second, will you? Thanks. Will you excuse me, doctor? Oh, of course. I'll come back later. Hello? A talk up, sport talk up. I can't. Somebody may be listening outside. Oh, what is it now? He's ready to leave. Oh, okay. Give it to me faster. He's wearing a light gray suit with a gray tweed top coat and a pearl gray snap brim hat. I figure he'll be out any time now, so better to get there early than late. Gray suit, gray tweed top coat, pearl gray snap brim hat. Check. The entrance to the apartment is on the other side, not facing the hospital. Yeah, check. Have you got enough? Oh, we can't miss. Is that all? That's all. Well, here we go. You're happy about it, aren't you? A buck is a dollar. How, how long will you be? Fifteen minutes stops. So long, mister. No time to kill. Yeah. No time to kill. But fifteen minutes to murder. May I, Sylvetti? Well, come in. Well, you're having a rather hectic time of it, aren't you? That's going all right. Mm, let's just try your pulse. I'm fine. Mm. You don't want to excite yourself too much, Savetic. I don't. Can't fool the pulse rate, you know. I'll settle down. Oh, I'm sure of it. In fact, I've signed your discharge. Miss Christopher will be up in a moment with your clothing and effects. I'm discharged? You'll be out of here in ten minutes. Fine. I won't see you again, so... Goodbye. Goodbye, Doctor. I lie in bed trying not to think, then trying to think of some way out for Benedict across the street. Fascinated, I stare at him across the way, preparing to clear out and walk right into those Tommy guns. Then I sit up sharply in bed. The man across the way is holding a pair of binoculars to his eyes, looking straight at me, it seems. I know they're binoculars, and I should have known he'd have binoculars when all that other sporting paraphernalia around. And then, all at once, I understand. I know. I'm not watching him. He's watching me. And if he is watching me, then my wire's probably been tapped, and they know all about that call to the FBI. They wanted me to try that call. And I bit. I fell for the whole tricky trap to make me show my hand. I'm the dirty stool pigeon, unquote, that Rev. Chinko hoped would reveal himself. I'm the patsy. Tag. I'm it. So let it get dead. Because here comes the nurse with my clothes and effects. So I can walk out of here. To be mowed down by gunsels that I've called myself. Oh, beautiful. Here you are, Mr. Spedic. Your things. You can be out of here in ten minutes, we hope. Well, what's the rush? How about an hour? Oh, no. Dr. Anatole said ten minutes. Can I have half an hour? I'm afraid not. Why not? Well, there's another patient coming in in ten minutes. All right. Okay. Get out. You can have a wheelchair to the curb if you like. I don't like. Will there be a car waiting for you? Yeah. A big black sedan. Oh, fine. Yeah, fine. Get out. I get dressed. I look across the street. Benedict is gone. I go over to the window and draw the shade. But it doesn't mean anything now. They know I'm coming out and that I'm FBI. I try to think of how I can get out by other exits. Not that it matters. If they don't get me now, they'll get me later. Now would be better for them. It would be an example of quick, bold vengeance for other informers to notice. I'm dead, all right. But I have one small satisfaction. At least I wasn't putting the finger on a fellow FBI undercover man. And then the door snaps open and the big man who wasn't there is there. O'Neill, Matt. Driscoll. Driscoll it is, Matt. Let's get out of here fast. 
Where were you? I tried to call you at the FBI, but some strange voice answered. I know. You know? Yeah, I instructed him to accept calls for Driscoll from O'Neill. Well, I took a chance and talked some jabberwocky at him, hoping he'd catch on and trace the call back here to the hospital. Yeah, smart boy, Matt, and we're smart little fellas, too. Because that's how I knew you were in this room. Where have you been all the time? Two rooms down the corridor, watching that commie across the street. You, too? They told me he was an FBI agent they wanted to knock off. I thought I was killing our own man. You almost did. What? I'm the guy. But it's me they're after. They're going to mow me down in the street. They've been watching me, testing me. I'm dead. Look, I was watching him first, getting a line on the people who visit him. They caught on after two days and sent him to watch me. But they had to get the information about me from you. How do you know that? Well, look at me. Remember the clothes that gent across the street was wearing? Gray suit, gray tweed top coat, pearl gray hat, right? Yeah. Well, he was watching me and mimicking whatever significant things I did for you to see in report. By reporting on him, you were reporting on me. Sort of a carom shot. They're after me, Matt, not you. They trust you completely as of this assignment. Or they wouldn't have let you act for them. Now, look, you leave first, and I'll follow in five minutes. Watch out for that Dr. Anatole, though. Anatole? He's one of us. Oh, brother. Have I got a headache? Get going. Say, what about the killer car? It's on the way. Nah, it'll never get here. As soon as we found out where you were, thanks to your call, we put a tap on your phone. We've had Elmwood 41137 staked out for two days. Oh, then you picked up those gunsels. Ten minutes ago, with all kinds of raps against them. They've all got records we can put them away for. Quite a haul, huh, man? Yeah. And you're in the clear. The Reds will blame me for everything. Nice haul. Terrific. Vacation in bed. Ha! <laughs> When I get downstairs, sure enough, no black sedan bristling with Tommy guns. My head is still whirling, and it isn't blood pressure. It's pressure, all right, but not blood pressure. I shake my head to a taxi driver at the curb. Walk it off, Semitic. Walk it off. Rest cure. Oh, sure. I ought to be resigned to the pressure by now. Resigned? Maybe. But there's no rest, and there's no peace. Just resignation to being marooned among enemies, forbidden from acknowledging my friends. I'm a communist for the FBI. I walk alone. This is Dana Andrews. I can drop my role of Matt Savetic after each show. But there's a real Matt Savetic from whose fantastic adventures these stories all stem. The story you've just heard happened in all its basic details. The constant silent warfare between the FBI and the Communist Party never ceases. This story told one small phase of that bitter fight. Names, places, and incidents have been disguised naturally, but the spirit of fact remains untouched. Next week, another exciting adventure from the journal of Matt Savetic, who worked undercover for the FBI. It's a landmark, and you're listening, so mark it. See you then. July 1st, 1953, I was a communist with the FBI on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Please thank this station, support their advertisers, and visit my webpage, classicradio.stream, where you can stream our shows on demand, learn more about Classic Radio Collecting. You can contact me there as well, as well as support this program. Classicradio.stream, that's classicradio.stream. 
dot stream. And do me a favor, tell all your friends the great radio shows are right here at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite station. Have a great weekend. <laughs>